As you can see this morning, wisdom is my theme. Wisdom is my theme. I'm not going to be long this morning. <laughs> it's one of those messages, and then you go. <laughs> As I said, how he gives it to me, that's how I present it. Yeah, I don't try to add on more or anything like that. I let God do what he tells me to do. Okay, here we go. So we are living in a time where everyone wants to make the right decisions. Who wouldn't? Everybody wants to make right decisions. Everyone wants to be around or associated with the person who seems to be the wisest to them. In other words, nobody wants to hang around the fool. <laughs> Making sense? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to be around the person that is smart, that has their head together, because, you know, the persons who are not thinking, they get you in trouble, right? So nobody wants to be around these people. People are paying millions of dollars for self-help gurus, motivational speakers, and professed wise people who have professed to discover the secret of life. <laughs> So they pay millions to these persons to come and host a conference and say, now listen to me, I know the secret of life, <laughs> with that English accent. <laughs> they're trying to say they're wise, and you would not believe this is a multi-million dollar industry. Don't need no formal education, don't need to go to, you know, Yale, Oxford, or any of those big schools. All you need to do is to be able to say the right things. And if people think you're wise, you got it made. That's it, Silver. You got it made. That's it. So, my job this morning is to simply show you where true wisdom comes from. That's easy. As I said, it's going to be boom, boom, boom. So, it's time to wise up. That's the title of the message. It's time to wise up. First point, how do we get wisdom? I'm so glad you asked such an intelligent question. Let me answer you. <laughs> Ask God for it. That's it. No special remedies or anything needed. Don't need a degree to do this. Just ask God for it. And the first verse I want to look at is James chapter 1, verse 5. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. That's it? I don't have to jump through any hoops. I don't have to do any special requirements. All I have to do is ask God. Yeah. Yeah. God does not want you to jump through any hoops or any special requirements to come to him. Just ask him for the wisdom. So you mean I don't have to do anything else? No. Only thing you have to do is ask. There's a scripture that backs it up. It says what? Ask and it shall be given unto you. Then why are we not using that scripture? We use every other scripture, but we don't want to use that. So he gives it away generously. Okay, so he doesn't say, here, there you go. That's a little bit of wisdom you need. <laughs> he gives it away generously. Wow. And we are holding on, not asking him for it. No, let me tell you this. If the scripture had said, <laughs> if you lack money, <laughs> let us ask of God that gives to everybody generously, 24 hours a day, <laughs> we would be, God, <laughs> I need money. I need money. <laughs> if he was giving away money, Todd, honest truth, everybody would be in line every day praying and saying, God, send me that money. But he's giving us something far greater than money. Because guess what? If you're sick and you're laid up in the hospital and you can't even spend your money, 
Once this brain is working and you can say something wise, you can impact somebody's life forever until they die. Wisdom is something we need just to ask of God. Next point. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. We want wisdom? Listen to the Holy Spirit. St. John 14, verse 26. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you. Really? Wow, let me read that again. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said unto you. We got our own personal tutor. Wow! Many people not sub subscribing to the class, though. <laughs> but we have our own tutor who is on call 24 hours of the day. Think about that. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us. The Holy Spirit is also our own personal assistant to remind us of what the Word of God says. I can tell you this. I've been in many a debates and there are some scriptures that sometimes I just cannot remember on a regular basis. But at that time, when I'm standing for God and in that debate, bam, the brain comes alive. And I always tell you, Mario ain't that brilliant. It's the Holy Spirit that brings back things to my remembrance. So we want to be wise. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit, right? Now, with all these resources, like the Holy Spirit, right, Christians should, notice I said should, <laughs> should be the wisest people in the world. Why do we keep making the same mistakes? Oh, okay, I don't know. Because we're not listening. <laughs> it's simple. We are not listening. Final point, I tell you. As God gives it to me, that's how I give it. We need to read God's word. So we need to ask God for wisdom. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And we need to read God's word. First one we want to look at. Let's see what the word of God says. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Wow. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Go back to that other verse. Yeah, I'm still on that one. Right. Fools despise wisdom and instructions. Listen to me. You ever met anybody you can't tell them anything? Uh-huh. Yeah, you don't have to answer. Just shake your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have friends that I can't tell anything. I have one I'm battling with right now. They want to tell you they are right all the time. Even when they are wrong, they are right all the time. You know, I remember when I did sales and marketing, they came to me in our sales class one day and the, the manager came and said, the customer is always right. And I said, the customer has the right to be wrong. <laughs> they were like, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to argue with them, but doesn't mean they're right all the time, but they have the right to be wrong because you're providing a service. So, it, don't, don't people like that who you can't tell anything will never come to God for wisdom. Because guess what? If they're not listening to me, and if they're not listening to you, they're not going to listen to God. Who is God to tell me anything? I know everything already. But the Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning. So if we get that in our heads that, oh my gosh, God is so awesome, God is so holy, he knows everything, and I start to reverence him and start to acknowledge him for everything, that's the beginning of wisdom. Because guess what? We're going to know to access it from him. Wow. Another verse that the Bible gives us is Proverbs 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting Get understanding. Wow. See, this word is very good. The instruction manual that we have gotten is very good. 
The Bible says it is most important to get wisdom. That's what God's word says. Get this wisdom. We already know how to get it, right? We covered that in the first point. Ask God. But the word also says it's very important to get understanding. Uh, okay, pastor, you got me here. I got the wisdom, but what's the understanding for? Thank you for asking. <laughs> understanding gives you the know-how and the when and where to apply the wisdom. Wow! You could know a lot of stuff. You could have a whole lot of knowledge, but you don't know how to apply it. You ever seen the mechanic that went to the school where he learned it in the books? Oh, man, you don't want to learn that. I've seen it. You know, some guys, they said, oh, we know about cars. Where did you study? Uh, so did you ever take a car apart? Oh, no, but I've seen it in the book. <laughs> You've seen it in the book. And then you give them a, a wrench and a socket and tell them to pull the screw, and they're like, this is so hard. <laughs> they can't do it. Because guess what? The Bible that God gives us is theory living with practical things. Think about it. The wisdom that comes out of the Bible is not just theory. The Bible wants us to practice it. Because when we practice it, that's how we get to do it. It's, so it's not alone in the book. So we need understanding. So we have to pray to God to give us the know-how, the when and where to apply this godly wisdom. Because sometimes to be wise means to shut your mouth. Okay, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> yeah! Sometimes to be wise means to shut your mouth. Yeah, let somebody else talk. Because sometimes you seem to be hugging the conversation or seem like you know too much and people get turned off. You don't want to hear anything you have to say. So sometimes the best way to be wise is to shut your mouth. Listen, it is useless we have wisdom and don't know when and how to apply it. That's a waste of time. So in conclusion, told you it was going to be quick. <laughs> yep. It's time for God's people to wise up, right? Wisdom is being given by God freely and generously if we only ask. We have our own guide through the Holy Spirit that is on call 24 hours of the day. All we have to do is listen and use it. We have a guidebook that gives us wise instructions. See how many things we have there? Look at that. One, two, three. What three symbolizes? The Trinity. Oh, see how God works sometime with numerology there? Didn't think of that, did you? <laughs> That's a little nugget there I'm dropping in for you. <laughs> but we have all these resources. We have to ask God, we listen to the Holy Spirit, and we have the instruction manual. Since we have all these resources, let's just use them. That's it. Let's just use them. I conclude with this saying. Listen to this saying. Here it goes. A wise man learns from his mistakes, but an even wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. Mm. Yeah. So I would, I would put that one down in the little book too. Let us as children of God be the wiser man so we don't make the mistake as others who never ask God for wisdom to lead them through this journey of life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I just want to magnify you because you are God. I was obedient this morning and shared your word and we're truly grateful for it, dear God. No matter how we think we are knowledgeable, no matter how we think we are great, and no matter how we think our minds can understand the realms of this earth, none of us compared together can even come near you, dear God. 
and our minute minds cannot understand how wise and how powerful and how all-knowing you are dear God so today as a church we humbly come before you and we ask now that you give, grant us wisdom dear God in our daily lives in our daily situations we ask you for wisdom we ask you for a special touch on the vision team dear God as they are seeking where this church should go what are the different areas they are going in their God we ask you to touch the leaders give them this godly wisdom we ask now for the volunteers that are going to be on this team that have not yet made their decision we ask that you just touch them dear Lord touch them that they may understand what they are called to do and we ask also dear God for a special touch for me as the pastor as I continue leading this fold dear God help me most of all to tap into your wisdom help me never to think that I'm anybody I'm nothing compared to you dear God I'm just a vessel that you are using so dear God we thank you for us being a family here we're thankful for our new members we're thankful for the rest of the day that's coming up as we celebrate together. And we ask that you just continue to bless this church. And we thank you and we praise you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.